The Human Self and Iblis. Translation of Iblis O Adam. Translated and edited. Dr. Ajaz Rasul, UK. The Quranic Concept of Satan and Perspective on Human Desires, Emotions, Intellect and Wahi. Author. Ghulam Ahmed Pawe. Five Shaitan. Satan. In the story of Adam one issue appears strikingly before us, the refusal to bow. Respite till the day of judgment, the challenge to misguide the children of Adam, are all from the direction of Iblis. But when after this there is mention of the error of Adam, here this is related towards Shaitan. In this regard, examine the various verses under the topic of Adam once more. In Surah al-Baqarah, after the refusal to bow and the instruction to Adam to stay clear of the forbidden tree, it is stated. Then did Satan make them slip. 2. 36. In Surah al-Araf it is stated. Then began Satan to whisper suggestions to them. 7. 20. It is stated in Surah Taha. But Satan whispered evil to him. 20. 120. From these places it appears as if Iblis and Shaitan are two separate entities. 5.1 Iblis and Shaitan. But in these same verses there are also such things in which the same action is sometimes attributed to Iblis and sometimes to Shaitan e. G. In one place it is stated about Iblis that he is your avowed enemy. 18.50 whereas at another place exactly the same is stated about Shaitan. 7. 22. The biggest episode of all is that of having Adam expelled from paradise. In Surah Taha it is stated that the cause of this is Iblis. 20. 116 to 117. But in Surah al-Baqarah this has been attributed to Shaitan. 2. 36. It is evident from these verses that Iblis and Shaitan are two sides of the same coin. This fact has emerged even more clearly in Surah Bani Israel where initially reference to Iblis is ongoing, but at the end it is stated. But Satan promises them nothing but deceit. 17. 64. In the following verse it is stated. As for my servants, no authority shall you have over them. Enough is your rab for a disposer of affairs. 17. 65. And in Surah Al-Hijr these same words are used about Iblis. 15. 42. The word Shaitan is either derived from Shatan which means remoteness I. E. Being deprived of mercy and blessing or from Shat Yashit which means the blazing of flames or to burn in fire I. E the display of inflammatory behavior. The view of some scholars is that this is a Hebrew word, and its fundamental meaning is that of a hindra. Hindrance I, e, one who impedes the path of evolution of humanity. It has already been noted about Iblis that its root, bls, is of hopelessness. The truth is that when human emotions incite him towards lawlessness then rebellion manifests in him, this is being satanic in which the aspect of impulsiveness is prominent. But when the consequences of this lawlessness appear before him, despondency and hopelessness descend on man as a result, this is called Iblisiat. Thus, from the point of view of its origin, an act of transgression by man is Shaitanat and from the point of view of its end, is Iblisiat. Therefore, Shaitan and Iblis are not two completely separate entities. They are two separate and distinct characteristics of one action. And Satan's are those tyrannical forces which entice others to transgress against the laws of Allah. 5.2 Doubts and Misgivings Now let us see in what different guises Shaitan appears before us. First of all, note that Shaitan planted a doubt in the heart of man. Then began Satan to whisper suggestions to them. 7. 20. See also. 20. 120. In other words, the creation of suspicion is a satanic act I. E. Causing the conviction of the heart to waver imperceptibly, breathing doubt into the solid resolve of someone. 
113. 4. By quiet and subtle whisperings inclining someone to move away from the divine laws. These are all tactics of Satan. It is stated in Surah and Nase. Say, O Rasul, I seek refuge with the Rab of mankind, the ruler of mankind, the Ilar of mankind, from the mischief of the whisperer. Kanas, who withdraws, after his whisper, the same, who whispers into the hearts of mankind, among jinns and among inns. 114, 1-6. Kanas means the one who silently and carefully, covered up and shrinking into the shadows, retreats with noiseless footsteps I. E. Having whispered into the ear of someone, planted a doubt in the heart of someone, then soundlessly steps back and hides, as if they have no knowledge whatsoever as to who is responsible for this satanic act of ruin. And who are these canars? The explanation of jinn and inns has already been covered in the previous topic. From this it is apparent that these satans are simply those human beings who create misgivings in the solid resolve of others with whisperings of doubts. At another place it is stated that man's own self, nafs, also keeps creating doubts. It was we who created man, and we know what dark suggestions his self, nafs, makes to him, for we are nearer to him than his jugular, vein, 50, 16. This nafs, which whispers doubts like this, a man's emotions of self-interest which continually prevent him from taking a step on the path of truth and righteousness. These are those very Satans, I, E, man's various thoughts, which assail from those places which are not even visible to man. About this army of Satan, the Quran states, For he and his tribe watch you from a position where you cannot see them. Surely, we made the evil ones, Satans, friends only to those without Iman. 7. 27. Then if on the one hand Satan plants doubts in the hearts in order to mislead from the righteous path, on the other hand it draws man towards battle by evoking those deceiving and mirage chasing wrong desires in the heart. His assertion is only that, I will mislead them, and I will keep creating in them false desires. 4. 119. He creates battle desires, and whatever efforts are expended to accomplish these desires he presents these in an immensely attractive form. So that no awareness can arise at any step whatsoever that the path on which they are treading, instead of taking them towards success and prosperity, is leading them towards a hell of destruction and ruin. 5.3 Adornment of Deeds Making deeds appear attractive is the greatest of deceptions which is presented from the direction of Satan. He conceals the idols of battle in such beautiful and dazzling, embellished and bedecked veils that the gazes remain entangled in their alluring, exquisite art and are not able to reach the truths hidden behind these attractive deceptions which are absorbing their attention. This is what is called adornment of deeds. And Satan made the deeds seem alluring to them. 6. 43. The truth is that when the evil deeds of man appear as meritorious in his eyes, then this is that deceit from which escaping becomes, if not impossible, still very difficult. The duping intellect of man does this very thing. It fabricates justifications which are in favor of his wrong deeds so that these do not even appear to be wrong to him. In this way, while consciously seeing everything with his eyes, he becomes lost in this hoax of color and fragrance. The Ad and the Thamud. People, clearly will appear to you from the traces of their buildings, their fate, Satan made the deeds alluring to them, and kept them back from the path, though they were gifted with intelligence and skill. 29. 38. About the people of Saba, it is stated, Satan has made the deeds seem pleasing to their eyes, and has kept them away from the path, so they receive no guidance. 27. 24. It is declared about all previous nations. By Allah, we, also, sent our messengers 
to peoples before you, but Satan made, to the wicked, their own acts seem alluring. He is also their patron today, but they shall have a most grievous penalty. 16, 63, 5.4 Manifestation of Alluring Deeds Glance at the environment surrounding you and see in how many deceptive forms the manifestations of these alluring deeds appear. Ask any one of the great Halakuas or Genghis Khans, or of the elite of the current system of Iblis, and then see how they justify every single act and declare it as a blessing for mankind. The state of the heart is such that the brigands of selfishness, injustice, vested interest and greed for wealth are sitting hidden within it. But the duping intellect parades these structures raised on these foundations as being a protective fort of peace and protection for the weak and feeble, the victimized and destitute. However, the gold plating of battle cannot endure for long. After continuing for a short period of time, the world sees how hollow the deception of Satan was. Say, shall we tell you of those who lose most in respect of the deeds? Those whose efforts have been wasted in this life, by ignoring the law of requital, while they thought that they were acquiring good by their works. They are those who deny the signs of their Rab and the fact of their having to meet him. In the hereafter, vain will be their works, nor shall we, on the day of judgment, give them any weight. That is their reward, hell, because they rejected Iman, and took my signs and my messengers by way of jest. 18, 103 to 106. 5.5 Adornment of Deeds in the Realm of Religion. Although the allurement of the deeds presented, by Satan is destructive in every department of human life, in the realm of religion its effect becomes very decimating. Just reflect that some beliefs and customs are continuing from an ancestral past. Man views these as being so saintly and sanctified that he goes around allotting them an abode in the deepest corners of his heart. Clear commands from Allah are present against these. But Satan presents these erroneous beliefs and rituals by making them so attractive that man, thinking them to be beyond any critique whatsoever, never troubles himself to even consider that he should evaluate these in the slightest in the light of the divine laws. In Surah Al-Araf, while describing the great deception of Satan, it is stated that the condition of those people on whom the spell of Satan works becomes such that when they do aught that is shameful, they say, We found our fathers doing so. Allah commanded us thus, Say, Nay, Allah never commands what is shameful. Do you say of Allah what you know not? 7. 28. These are the same people about whom it is clarified a couple of verses later. You became two groups. One group he has guided. Due to their righteous deeds the other lost their way, as a result of their rejection and misdeeds, in that they took Satans, in preference to Allah, for their friends and protectors, and think that they receive guidance. 7. 30. Let us deliberate in greater depth on, think that they are on guidance, and then consider how many there are among us whose condition is exactly this. When they are told to follow the revelation, that Allah has sent down, they say, Nay, we shall follow the ways that we found our fathers. Following. What? Even if it is Satan. In this disguise, beckoning them to the penalty of the blazing fire. 31. 21. But then what do we do about this deception of Satan? That a Muslim assumes that these verses were revealed about the Jews and Christians or the pagan Arabs, and that these have nothing to do with us. On the contrary their hearts became hardened, and whatever evil deeds they were committing, Satan made these seem alluring to them. 6. 43. The Quran has presented one such narrative metaphorically in two verses through which the whole history of the Muslims appears. Before us, it is stated, relate to them the story of the man to whom we sent our signs, but he passed them by. So Satan followed him up, and he went astray. 7. 
175. Relate to them also the tale of the man to whom we gave our code of laws. He acted on these for a period of time and after that he extricated himself from it in the same way that a snake sloughs off its old skin and emerges bare. As he exited from this code of divine laws, Satan pounced and snatched him, and in place of the divine code handed him the religion devised by men themselves, the consequence of which was that the correct path to his destination was completely lost. After this it is stated, if it had been our will, we should have elevated him with our signs. But he inclined to the earth, and followed his own vain desires. His similitude is that of a dog. If you attack him, he lolls out his tongue, or if you leave him alone, he still lolls out his tongue. That is the similitude of those who reject our signs. So relate the story. Perchance they may reflect. 7. 176. 5.6 Communal Life and Satan. This was the whispering of hearts, the creation of false desires and the adornment of evil deeds. Now moving on from this, let us examine the constructive life of the collective form. The aim of the Quran is this, that the system of Rabubiyat should be established within human society. The definition of the system of Rabubiyat is such a system according to which responsibility for the needs of life of all individuals of humanity should be of the society. And it should make provision for all the means of sustenance for the full development of all of their potentials. For this, the program of the Quran is this, that the means of production, Rizetq, should remain within the control of the society and that the members of the society should retain what is required for their own needs from the outcome of their hard work and hand over the remainder to the system. So that in this way it continues to fulfill the needs of life of all the individuals of society and continues to provide the means of nourishment for them. But Satan, human vested interests, continually scares him by saying that you will become poor and destitute by doing this, you should worry about yourself and your progeny, what do you care about the nourishment of others? This is the actual basis of the tussle between Iblis and Wahi. The Quran states that, remember, Satan will frighten you at every step by saying that, if you hand over to the divine system, you will become dependent. Hence, he will say to you to keep everything with yourself. But contrary to this, the law of Allah becomes the assurance to provide the means of protection and economic prosperity. His law contains great abundance and knowledge. 2. 268. 5.7 Anvac. Beneficence. Hack and battle are facing a battle, the issue of collective life and death is before them. The question is of the establishment of the system of Rebubiat. But the deception of Satan is that he is constantly creating this fear in the hearts that if you give away your own wealth in this way for the sake of others, then you yourself will die of hunger. Success and prosperity lie concealed in saving yourself from this short-sightedness and miserliness of the human self. The Quran declares that the secret of the development of the human self lies in this, that man should prefer others over himself. Hence, it has announced this to be the foremost trait of the members of the Jamaat establishing the system of Rabubiyat and those saved from the covetousness of their own selves, they are the ones whose fields will bear fruit. 59. 9. 5.8 Bakul and Asraf those who practice Bakul. Miserliness. Are. Followers of Satan, and on the other side so are those who indulge in Asraf. Extravagance. Verily spendthrifts are brothers of Satan's and Satan is to his rab ungrateful for his bounties. Opening parenthesis. 17. 27. 5.9 Spreading evil. Furthermore, the spreading of fake news in order to interfere in the unity and integrity of the Jamaat and to broadcast these in the air without investigation is also satanic. It is stated, when there comes to them some matter touching public 
safety or fear, they divulge it. If they had only referred it to the messenger or to those charged with authority among them. I. E. Local officials. The proper investigators. Those possessing knowledge and expertise. Would have tested it from them direct. And fear would not have spread throughout the populace. Were it not for the grace and mercy of Allah unto you. Your weaknesses were such that. All but a few of you would have fallen into the clutches of Satan. 4. 5.10 Causing disunity. Continually spreading those rumors and indulging in such gossip as a result of which the unity of the millet. Uma. Becomes shattered and in place of mutual love and affection dissension and enmity are born. Say to my servants that they should. Only. Say those things that are best. For Satan does sow dissensions among them. For Satan is to man an avowed enemy. 17. 53. 5.11 Corruptions. Either general evil in society and the inclination towards lewdness, or to create their causes and means and make them commonplace. The Quran has stated. For he, Satan, commands you what is evil and shameful, and that you should say false things about Allah that of which you have no knowledge. 2. 169. At another place. O oh, you who have Iman. Intoxicants and gambling. Dedication of. Stones and. Divination by. Arrows are an abomination of Satan's handwork. Is too such. Abomination. That you may prosper. Satan's plan is. But. To excite enmity and hatred between you with intoxicants and gambling, and hinder you from the remembrance of Allah and from Salat. Will you not then abstain from such evils? 5. 90-91. Furthermore, all kinds of pagan customs are also inventions of Satan. 4. 119. 5.12 Argument and strife without knowledge and reason. Disputing about Allah, and his commands and laws, without knowledge and reason, who can have knowledge and reason against the divine laws, is that path which leads to arrant misguidance. And yet among men there are such as dispute, about Allah, without knowledge, and follow every Satan obstinate in rebellion. About, Satan, it is decreed that whoever turns to him for friendship, him will he lead astray, and he will guide him to the penalty of the fire. 22, 3-4. And this misguidance is born of blind obedience to the maslak of their forefathers. The reality is that only he who is blindly fixed on the path of his forefathers and does not feel any need to evaluate their maslak against the criteria of the Book of Allah, disputes. Devoid of knowledge and logic. With the enlightened book of Allah. When they are told to follow. The revelation. That Allah has sent down. They say. Nay we shall follow the ways that we found our fathers. Following. What. Even if it is Satan beckoning them to the penalty of the fire. 31. 21. 5.13 Forgetfulness and heedlessness. Whatever the number of verses that have appeared before you, by reflecting on them this reality will become clear to you that in them by shaitan is not meant an external entity. Rather it is those same people who continually create chaos and conflict in a society. Or that religious elite who do not wish the people to come to the book of Allah. The Quran and keep insisting to them that you should keep following this path of theirs which is continuing to be passed down to you from your forefathers with your eyes closed. Or for the duping intellect of man himself which gives preference to individual interest over the interest of mankind. For all of them the Quran has used the term Satan's. As we have written before, in reality all of this is done by the human emotions. The intellect merely becomes the tool by which to bring to fruition the decisions of the emotions. These are those very emotions which obscure the truth from man's vision and make him forget the remembrance of matters of truth. This is why heedlessness is also declared to be the handiwork of Satan. 6. 
68 12 42 in this way little by little satan makes even the remembrance of the laws of allah fade from their hearts satan has got the better of them so he has made them lose the remembrance of allah they are the party of satan truly it is the party of satan that will perish 58 19 and regarding those who forget to remind themselves of Allah, the consequence of this is that they forget about their own self and the objectives of life. And be you not like those who forgot Allah, and he made them forget their own selves. Such are the rebellious transgressors. In this way they took another path rather than the straight path. 59, 19 and in the fight against Iblis this is indeed the greatest defeat, that men forgot about their own selves. 5.14 Fear and Grief We have seen in the story of Adam that the greatest power which has been bestowed on man against Satan is divine wahi, obedience of which results in protection from fear and despair. Hence, the great trick of Satan is to shake the resoluteness of his feet and weaken the determination of his aim by creating fear and despair. In Surah Ali Imran we are told about the Mominin. Men said to them, A great army is gathering against you, so fear them. But it only increased their iman. They said, For us Allah suffices, and he is the best disposer of affairs. 3. 173. After this it is stated. It is only Satan that suggests to you the fear of his votaries. Be you not afraid of them, but fear me, if you have Iman. 3. 175. From this it also becomes known what means and resources Satan employs to create fear I. E. In opposition to Islam, he appears in the guise of opponents who frighten Muslims with their power and status. Regarding that particular Satan who is referred to here, history informs us that he was the spy whom the Quraysh of Makkah had dispatched to instill fear into the hearts of the Muslims and to intimidate them with their power. It is these very companions of Satan against whom fighting is prescribed. Those who have Iman fight in the cause of Allah, for justice and the divine laws. And those who reject Iman fight in the cause of evil, I, E, the path of chaos and tyranny. So fight you against the friends of Satan, and ignore their power and numbers. Feeble indeed, in opposition to Hak, is the cunning of Satan. 4, 76, see also, 8. 48, 19, 83. Those who have Iman, their fighting is for the cause of Allah because they do not fight for human desires. They fight in support of justice and equity, and for the establishment and execution of the laws of Allah. And those people who have adopted the path of Kufa, fight in the path of evil. Taghut. The Quran states that the Malaika descend upon those people who declare that our Rab is Allah and then remain staunchly firm on their pronouncement. 41. 30. Contrary to this, the descent of Satans occurs upon those people who adopt the path of self-devised battle. 26. 221. These Satans do not descend on man from somewhere outside. They are hidden within the depths of the hearts of human beings themselves, and when he forms the decision to take a wrong path then these arise and appear before him. These are his rebellious emotions whose manifestation is in the form of tangible acts. These are the Satans to whom obedience has been prohibited. 2. 168. 2. 208. 5.15 Worship of Shaitan. In some verses it has been translated as that you should not worship Satan. 36. 60. However, these meanings are not correct. No, one actually worships Satan. The meaning of Abudiyat is obedience or acceptance of laws. At another place it is stated, For assuredly we send amongst every people a messenger, serve Allah and is to Taghut. Evil Forces 16, 36. 
5.16 meanings of takhut. Since the word takhut has been used here, instead of Satan, therefore it seems appropriate that we should ascertain its meaning before moving forward. The meaning of tuffian is to exceed a limit. Hence, at the time of Noah's flood, when the waves of the water had reached heights like mountains, it was stated. So the ark floated with them on the waves towering like mountains. 11. 42. This state has been compared to the overwhelming flood of water. We, when the water, Noah's flood, overflowed beyond its limits, carried you in the floating ark. 69. 11. In other words, for something to function according to its scale is called balance, and to contravene it is called transgression and exceeding all limits. In Surah R. Raman the explanation of this meaning has been stated in even clearer terms. And the firmament has he raised high, and he has set up the balance of justice, in order that you may not transgress due balance. 55, 7 to 9. He raised the heaven and established the balance of justice, ADL, so that you do not exceed the limits in weighing, and maintain the weight precisely, and do not resort to any kind of reduction in the weighing of matters of life. Keeping the balance of justice straight is a manifestation of its proper status. Moving away from this criterion is transgression and rebelliousness from the straight path. Now let us turn to human life. Everything in the universe has been made subservient to man, hence, governance over them is within the sphere of the supremacy of man. Authority within these bounds is not transgression and contravention. But man himself is not subservient to any other man, therefore no human being has the right to govern another human being. Hence, if some human being, or group, by acquiring power makes other people his subjects, then this is his exceeding beyond the legitimate boundaries and is transgression and contravention. Such a rebellion in which he becomes a claimant of equivalence to Allah. 5.17 Every non-Allah system. This is why according to the Quran every kind of system of obedience other than the system of the Quran is a takhuti system and subservience to it is degradation of human eminence. The consequence of such a system is turmoil which is the antonym of reformation. Those former nations who, by transgressing against the laws of Allah had established a government based on self-devised laws, were the flag bearers of the takhuti system, the consequence of which was tyranny i. e. Imbalances within society. O oh, Rasul, see you not how your Rab dealt with the people of Ad of the city of Aram with lofty buildings, such a people has not emerged to this day. And similarly, do you not know what happened to the people of Thamud who used to construct buildings by cutting through mountains? And how pharaohs with great armies and their companions, who had resorted to rebellion in cities, were dealt with? All of these nations had created tremendous chaos in these lands. 89. 6-12. Particularly Pharaoh, whose crime was that he had espoused Tufyani. Go, O oh Moses, to Pharaoh, for he had indeed transgressed all bounds. Taha. Dot. Single quote opening parenthesis. 20. 24. It was this very transgression which was the cause for the annihilation of these nations. But the Thamud were destroyed merely due to transgressing all bounds. 69. 5. Man espouses contravention at that point in time when he assumes that I have no need of anyone. Under this false assumption, he does not feel the need for obedience to any code and law. Nay. But man does transgress all bounds, in that he looks upon himself as self-sufficient. 96. 6 to 7. This happens because man assumes that life is just a name for the existence of the physical body and that I have gathered so much wherewithal for this that I am no longer in need of anyone else. Then, for such as had transgressed all bounds, and had preferred the life of this world over long-term benefits, opening parenthesis, 79, 
37 to 38. But if he understands that life is not just about nourishment of the physical body but that. Other than this, there is also another entity which is called the human self and that the real purpose of life is the training and strengthening of this. Then he will never dissociate himself from others because the training and strengthening of the human self is through arranging provision of the means of sustenance for other human beings. Therefore, an individual can never be dissociated from other individual human beings. For the completion of his self he is in need of that kind of society which has been shaped according to the divine laws. Moreover, he is also in need of other human beings and also of the divine laws. But those people who do not keep an eye on this fact and consider life to be confined solely to nourishment of the body, do not feel the need for the divine laws, and shape society according to their own self-constructed constitution and codes. These are those very people who establish a Takhoti system in which, instead of the divine laws, their self-constructed laws are implemented. The Jamaat-e Mominin has been forbidden to approach this system because for those whose aim of life is the establishment of the constitution of Allah, how can opting for a Takhoti system be declared to be legitimate for them? The Quran states, have you not turned your vision to those who declare that they have Iman in the revelations that have come to you and to those before you? Their real wish is to resort together for judgment in their disputes to the evil one, Taghut, though they were ordered to reject him, his system, but Satan's wish is to lead him astray far away from the right path. 4. 60. This fact becomes transparent that making life decisions according to the self-made laws of men means obedience to the non-Allah. Taghut. System. For the ones who avoid this system, there are glad tidings of successes and prosperities both in this life as well as in the next stage. Those who eschew evil, Taghut, and fall not into its obedience, and turn to Allah. In repentance. For them are glad tidings. So announce, O Rasul, the glad tidings to my servants. 39, 17. Contrary to this, the abode of the servants of Taghut is dire. 5, 60. I, E, hell, hell both in this world, on which each and every fragment of blazing Europe is a witness. And in the hereafter. 5.18 Another system of Taghut. This is the system of Taghut which takes shape in the form of a government and state. But other than this, there is another Taghuti system which is established under the Shroud of Holiness. In this system, one Jamaat of men makes other men their subjects and subservient to them, not at the point of a sword, but by inculcating the idol of the greatness and saintliness into the depths of their hearts. When, in this way, reverence for them makes its abode in their hearts. Then this contingent of saints gets every command of theirs accepted by them. And in this way establishes the type of rule for the preservation of which there is no requirement for an army and soldiers. This is that subjugation whose chains man fastens round his own ankles with his own hands with the utmost of servility and humility, lowliness and obedience. This is that system about which it is stated in the Quran. Bring you up, it shall be said, the wrongdoers and their companions, and the things they obeyed besides Allah, and lead them to the way to the fierce fire. 37, 22 to 23. After this it is stated, and they will turn to one another and question each other. They, the followers, will say, it was you who used to come to us from the right hand of power and authority. They, the leaders, will reply, nay, you yourselves had no iman, nor had we any authority and power over you. Nay, it was you who were a people in obstinate rebellion. 37, 27 to 30. 
Just reflect with what clarity this reality has been unveiled that the veneration for and leadership of these chieftains is not based on their own power. Instead it is dependent on the volition and sentiment of reverence of these followers. If they stopped believing them, then their rule would automatically come to an end. The reality is this, that no matter what kind of subjugation and exploitation there may be in the world, its foundation is based on the weakness of the ruled themselves. It is only the ruler of rulers, Allah, whose being is such that his rule and authority does not owe itself to the sentiments of the ruled but is established on its own power. Other than him no one else possesses this power, hence no one else has the right to govern. In any event, these are the Satans about whom it is stated. And Satan will say when the matter is decided, It was Allah who gave you a promise of truth. I too promised, but I failed in my promise to you. I had no authority over you except to call you, but you listened to me. Then reproach not me but reproach your own selves. I cannot listen to your cries, nor can you listen to mine. I reject your former act in associating me with Allah. You also started following my commands like his commands. Surely, for wrongdoers there must be a grievous penalty. 14. 22. 5.192 Distinct Paths this is that system of Taghut about which it is stated that it is the opposite of Iman in Allah. There is no compulsion of any sort in Deen. Undoubtedly, the path of guidance has separated and become evident from the path of evil. Now both paths are in front of people and they can adopt whichever they desire. And whoever now denies Taghut, I, E, refuses to obey every system which is shaped on non-Allah system and brings to bear Iman on Allah, I, E, only accepts obedience of that system which is established on the laws of Allah. Then without doubt he has held on to a strong branch, which is never going to sever. Whoever holds it is protected from falling down. And remember Allah hears and knows all. Allah is the companion and helper of those who adopt the path of Iman. He brings them out of all kinds of darknesses and brings them into the light. But for the people who have adopted the path of Kufa, their helpers are transgressors and miscreants. They take them out of the light and into darknesses. These are the people whose party is meant for hell, to remain therein forever. 2. 256-257 you cannot hold a conviction in Allah alone until you have firstly accepted in practical terms that there is no God. You cannot obey the divine system until the time that you turn away from every non-Allah system. It cannot be that your face becomes turned towards the east and the west at the same time. In order to turn your face towards one, you will need to turn your face away from the other. This was the teaching of every messenger. This is the trustworthy handhold of Islam. And we assuredly sent amongst every people of the world a messenger to proclaim the message of Haq, adopt obedience of Allah and eschew evil. Of the people were some whom Allah guided, those who followed Allah's laws, and some on whom evil became inevitably established, them who were rebellious. So now go around the earth and see what was the ultimate end of the nations which falsified the truth. 16. 36. Just think that whichever messenger came, he came with this revolutionary invitation that obedience and submission belong only to one Allah. The omnipotent, other than this, there is no system of obedience which is such that it should be obeyed. And obedience to Allah cannot take place until the time that every non-Allah system has not been rejected in practical terms. How great and splendid is this invitation and how amazing is this revolution. Such a revolution which by freeing human beings from every kind of slavery to other human beings makes him capable of walking with his head held high. 5.20 Causes of Error This fact has been presented from the very start that Shaitan is the name for man's own rebellious emotions i.e. 
When man obeys his own rebellious emotions contrary to the laws of Allah, it is said about him that he obeyed Satan. The reason being that these kinds of decisions and acting on these decisions has been designated as actions of Satan. For example, when Moses, in the period prior to messengerhood, killed a Kabti during an angry altercation, expressing regret over this he stated. He said, this is a work of Satan, for he is an enemy that manifestly misleads. 28. 15. The ways and means for error from the direction of Satan are provided by the deeds themselves of man. When, during the battle of Uhad, a slight error of judgment was made by a party of the Mujahideen, it was stated regarding this. Those of you who turned back on the day the two hosts met, it was Satan who caused them to fail, because of some error they had committed. But Allah has blotted out their fault, for Allah is all protecting and most forbearing. 3. 155. Regarding those among you who turned their face away from the battle the day that the two armies confronted each other. The cause for this error of theirs was only that Satan caused their footsteps to falter because of some weaknesses which they had created within themselves. It was not because there was any weakness in their iman. The fact is that Allah forgave this error of theirs, his law is such that in a great system the means of protection is available for such errors. And the system does not falter from its foundation just from this. It was in this way that the brothers of Yusuf had separated him from Yaqub according to a deliberate scheme but Yusuf associated this grudge of his brothers to Satan. 12. 100. In Surah Az Zukraf it is stated that whichever individual shuts his eyes to the law of Allah R. Rahman. Allah imposes Satan on him, and then the state of such people becomes such that they are continuing on the wrong path all the while thinking themselves to be on the straight path. And, remember, if anyone shuts his eyes to the laws of the Raman, we appoint a Satan over him, who is, as a consequence, indeed his intimate companion. Verily, such, Satans, really hinder them from the path of Allah, and they become heedless of their evil conduct. But, think that they are being guided aright. 43, 36, 37. From the above verses it is evident that what is described as an error from the direction of Satan is, in reality, purely a consequence of human deeds. The motives for these wrong deeds are, to a greater or lesser degree, the effects of the society which he adopts for himself, because the influence of the companions he associates with is the profoundest of all. The Quran has termed this as Kareem, mutual companion. It is stated in Surah and Nisa. Nor those who spend of their substance, to be seen of men, but have no iman in Allah and the last day. If any take Satan for their intimate, what a dreadful intimate he is. 4. 38. See also. 25. 28 to 30. 5.21 sycophants. Through false admiration and deceptive discourse these sycophantic and flattering courtiers never allow the true reality to present itself. And for the sake of their own objectives and interests they adorn his lies and nonsensical utterances in various ways. And we have destined for them intimate companions, of like nature, who made alluring to them what was before them and behind them. 41. 25. As a consequence, he and his associates will all end up together in the annihilation of hell. And his companion will say, here is, his record, ready with me, the sentence will be, throw, throw into hell every consummatious rejecter of Allah, who forbade what was good, transgressed all bounds, cast doubts and suspicions, who set up another god beside Allah, throw him into a severe penalty, his companion will say, ah Rab, I did not make him transgress, but he was, himself, far astray, he will say, dispute not with each other in my presence. I had already in advance sent you warning. 
the word changes not before me, and I do not the least injustice to my servants. 50. 23 to 29. That associate, Kareen, will then blatantly deny that he ever misguided him, declaring that he was bent upon being misguided himself. At length, when, such a one, comes to us, he says, to his evil companion, would that between me and you were the distance of east and west. Ah, evil is the companion, indeed. 43, 38. But for those people who follow the divine laws, this kind of associate has no effect on them because they bear Allah in mind at all times. Referring to the mutual conversation of the inhabitants of Janet, the Quran states, Then they will turn to one another and question one another. One of them will start the talk and say, I had an intimate companion, on the earth, who used to say what? Are you among those who bear witness to the truth of the message? Question mark. When we die and become dust and bones, shall we indeed receive rewards and punishments? A voice said, Would you like to look down? He looked down and saw him in the midst of the fire. Jahim, he said, By Allah, you were little short of bringing me to perdition. Had it not been for the grace of my Rab, I should certainly have been among those brought. There, single quote opening parenthesis, 37, 51 to 57. And the way in which to protect oneself from these Satans is for man to bring himself within the sanctuary of the divine laws. The Quran therefore states, And if, at any time, an incitement to discord is made to you by Satan, seek refuge in Allah. His laws. He is the one who hears and knows all things. 41. 36. 5.22 Procedure for Protection from Satan. These are those Satans which have been pursuing the progeny of Adam right from the very first day and will remain with them like a shadow until the day of judgment. We have been informed that the way in which to protect oneself from internal and external destructions is that as soon as the spark of their flame becomes visible, to bring yourself immediately within the boundaries defined by Allah where Allah's law will provide you with protection. If a suggestion from Satan assails you, mind, seek refuge with Allah, for he hears and knows all things. Those who are fearful of the consequences of going against the laws of Allah, when a thought of evil from Satan assaults them, bring Allah to remembrance. Know the consequence of evil. When lo, they see, aright. 7, 200 to 201. For protection from the whispering ways and deceptions of Satan's, appeal for this. And say, O oh my Rab. I seek refuge with you from the suggestions of the evil ones. And I seek refuge with you, O oh my Rab, lest they should come near me. 23, 97 to 98. It was with these supplications and entreaties that the mother of Maryam handed over her daughter to the protective peace of Allah when she stated that. And I commend her and her offspring to your protection from Satan, the rejected. 3. 36. This is because from such an open enemy, yet one who assaults by laying down traps camouflaged like the earth itself, where else can safety from his plots be availed other than from the laws of Allah? In order to make this reality sink even more deeply in the heart, attention has been drawn repeatedly to this fact, that remember. For verily he is to you an avowed enemy. 2. 168. See also, 2, 208, 12, 5, 36, 60, 43, 62, 5.23 Satans, the ringleaders of the Takhuti system. Since Satan is the manifestation of defiance and transgression, hence the Quran has also used the term Satans for the chieftains and ringleaders of those groups who have forgotten Allah. And this is also the truth that if those people who constantly strive in this aim that Allah's law should not become established in the world, if they are not Satans then what else are they?
At the very beginning of Surah al-Baqarah it is declared about the hypocrites. When they meet those who have iman, they say, We believe. But when they are alone with their satans, they say, We are really with you. We, were, only jesting. 2. 14. In Surah Anbal that Satan is referred to, who had incited the unbelievers of Mecca against the Muslims, and who then himself bolted from the battlefield. 8. 48. In Surah al-Baqarah in relation to the mention of Suleiman, it is stated that instead of obeying the laws of Allah the Jews would begin to chase those fictional tales and propaganda which the Satans had spread against the nation of Suleiman. They followed what the evil ones gave out, falsely, against the power of Suleiman, though the fact is that, he never did Kufa, but, it was these Satans who had adopted this path, of Kufa, 2, 102, here too, by Satans is meant the ringleaders of the people spreading evil and chaos. Details will be given later at its own place. In Surah Al-Anam it is stated, Likewise did we make for every messenger an enemy, Satans among men and jinns, inspiring each other with flowery discourses by way of deception. If your Rab had so planned, they would not have done it. But his law is that the choice of human beings should not be curtailed. So leave them and their inventions alone. 6. 112. It is clear from this that the opponents of the message and mission of the Anbiya are called Satans. They are, in truth, those religious clergy who, following the demise of a messenger, would meld the deceptive, sugar-coated yet highly entertaining sermons with his teaching. Or in its place, by declaring these homilies as being deen, would make them mainstream. And in this way, by forsaking the true deen of Allah, a nation would begin to obey their self-devised religion. In a similar fashion, those well-built, gigantic and rebellious people of the uncivilized and savage tribes whom Suleiman had employed in relation to various tasks for the construction of his fortresses, are cited using the term Satans. And of the evil ones, were some who dived for him, and did other work besides. And it was, we who guarded them. 21, 82, see also, 38, 37 to 38, 5.24 soothsayers and fortune tellers. In the era of ignorance of mankind this belief was prevalent that the destiny of human beings is linked with the stars. And by going to the heavens the soothsayers and fortune tellers can determine information about the stars, and then sit and concoct prophecies about the destinies of men. Contemplate the history of religions and in every place of worship you will find holy idols of the soothsayers and astrologers who used to be worshipped. The Quran has used the term Satans for these people as well and has stated that their business could flourish in the era of ignorance but now that the world has been illuminated by the light of the Quran, if they now try to go to the heavens to seek information, then the fireball of knowledge and intellect will pursue them and they will flee from there, failed and frustrated. The era for such superstitions has now passed. If any of their narrations now turns out to be correct, it is merely the result of guesswork, neither the outcome of knowledge and intellect, nor the consequence of the spiritual powers. In Surah at Tur it is stated, Or are the treasures of your Rab with them, or are they managers? Of Affairs 52, 37 from the above verse it appears that those soothsayers or astrologers are noted here who were being worshipped in that era. After this it is stated, or have their ladder, by which they can, climb up to heaven and, listen, to its secrets. Then let, such a, listener of theirs produce a manifest proof. 52, 38. Here, this fact has been made clear that this is all a deception and chicanery of these people who proclaim that they can also obtain knowledge of heavenly affairs. These people do not have access to heavenly wahi. These truths can only be found in the Book of Allah, whose descent is from the Supreme Authority. The Book of Allah is not the proclamation of some Satan. 
nor is it the word of a Satan accursed. 81. 25. 5.25 The Quran is free from their influences. Indeed, Satans have been prevented from even hearing the Quran. No evil one has brought down this revelation. It would neither suit them, nor would they be able to produce it. Indeed they have been removed far from even a chance of hearing it. 26. 210 to 212. Because the Quran is complete truth and hack and Satans have nothing to do with this. The Quran has descended directly from the radiant environs of the heavens onto the holy receptive heart of Rasulullah and has remained absolutely pure and free from any contamination en route. Its state is in fact such that Satans can have no chance even to glimpse its supreme and high fountainhead, nor to produce any quiver in this abundant and perpetually flowing, transparent and pure stream. For he, Gabriel, brings down the revelation to your heart. 2. 97. The trickeries of magic and fortune-telling were able to establish their influence during the era of ignorance and darkness but after the revelation of the Quran, which is complete knowledge and vision and light and wisdom from top to bottom, the rule of these contrived fictions ended. Now from the court of knowledge and wisdom coals of fire were hurled on them. Turn over the pages of history and you will see how strong the influence of magic and fortune-telling was on the human mind. But today those influences have become left confined in the valleys of ignorance and darkness only. The bright sun of the Quran has exposed these darknesses, and with the light of the dawn, the darknesses of night have vanished. So all those doors have closed on these magicians, soothsayers and fortune tellers through which they used to deceive the public. These are those very soothsayers and fortune tellers who are mentioned in the following verses of Surah Al-Jinn. And we cried into the secrets of heaven, but we found it filled with stern guards and flaming fires. We used, indeed, to sit there in hidden stations to steal a hearing. But any who listens now will find a flaming fire watching him in ambush. 72, 8-9. The fact is that the Quran produced an astounding revolution in the human world. It declared that the human intellect is now entering its age of consciousness, thus there will be no scope remaining for any kind of superstition in the world of humanity. The invitation of the Quran is an invitation based entirely on knowledge and vision, reason and evidence. It appeals to human intellect and wisdom and declares that the abode of those who do not make use of intellect and reasoning is hell. Therefore, after the revelation of the Quran, this era of superstition ended in which the holy cult of priesthood used to keep people ensnared in this duplicity that they had knowledge of matters of the unseen and that they know the mysteries of the heavens. These are those very Satans on whom coals of fire fall from the Quranic court of knowledge and wisdom. However, though the Quran had stated the above, after that the state of that nation itself who were holders of the Quran became such that now there can be found among them. At every step, those individuals whose claim is that they possess knowledge of unseen matters, they prophesy and inform people about the destiny, indeed claim that they can change the destiny. Think over what the message of the Quran was, and what the nation inheriting it is doing. 5.26 Tampering with the Divine Books was a satanic act. This used to occur with all of the books of revelation prior to the Quran. That following the appearance of a messenger, Satans would weave in a great deal from their own side with the received and proclaimed wahi of the messenger, and in this way would make this pure heavenly teaching corrupted. When this situation arose, then after this another messenger would come from Allah who by separating out the thoughts and ideas intermixed by the human mind would once again purify and cleanse Allah's teaching. In Surah Al-Hajj it is stated, Never did we send a messenger or a Nabi, before you but whatever he recited, of the message, 
Satan intermixed something, tampered with it, but Allah will cancel anything, vain, that Satan throws in, and Allah will confirm, and establish, his signs, for Allah is full of knowledge and wisdom. 22, 52, 5.27 Fabricated Narratives Besides this another similar act of these same Satans is also noted I. E. These people do not tamper with Allah's wahi, but by concocting very interesting types of narratives draw a deceptive veil of deen over these so that gradually these narratives become exactly as if deen. And in this way the deen of Allah becomes concealed from the eyes behind these adorned curtains such that even if an effort is ever made to uncover it and bring it out into the open, people would strongly oppose it. Bring to mind once again this verse of Surah Al-Anam in which it is stated, And, O Rasul, likewise did we make for every messenger an enemy, satans among men and jinns, inspiring each other with flowery discourses by way of deception. If your Rab had so planned, they would not have done it. But the decision of his wisdom was that man's choice and intent should not be suppressed. So leave them and their inventions alone. 6. 112. People become trapped in this camouflage net of lies and deceits and in this way fall far away from the truth to such deceit. Let the hearts of those incline who have no iman in the hereafter. Let them delight in it and let them earn from it what they may. 6. 113. Even though obedience should not be of these deceiving and enchanting fictions, but of the Book of Allah. 6. 114. 5.28 Satan in the meaning of serpent. In the Arabic language Satan can also mean serpent. At a few places in the Quran this word has also been used with this connotation e. g. It is stated about the head of a snake. The flowers of this tree of Zakam, are like the heads of snakes. 37. 65. Explaining the psyche of an interest. Usury. Devouring individual, it is stated. Those who, instead of helping the needy, devour usury and fill their bellies, should remember that the result of their oppressive deeds will be manifest before them. They will not be able to stand, but will be like a man deranged bitten by a snake. 2. 275. Likewise, in the story of Eunice it is mentioned, that a snake had bitten him and for this, too, the word, Satan, has been used. 38. 41. 5.29 Summary of the chapter. Iblis or Shaitan. Satan, is the name for those human emotions which, having rebelled against the laws of Allah, place man on wrong paths. On the basis of the rebelliousness of these emotions they are defined by the term shaitan. And because the ultimate outcome of every transgression is hopelessness, from this respect these are termed as iblis. Iblis and shaitan are two sides of the same coin, the abode of which is the heart of man himself. The exploits of Satan seek to arouse doubts in the hearts of men so that his resolve and conviction becomes shaken laying down on their paths scenes of such alluring, deceiving, false desires and enticing cravings in which the focus of the gaze remains riveted and in this way, instead of continuing to progress forward on the journey of life towards their destination, they become captivated and lost in this pageant of color and fragrance and then to make their efforts and endeavors appear so attractive so that they have no realization whatsoever that whatever we are doing is wrong and devoid of benefit. The world of religion suits these kinds of deceptive scenarios and adornment of deeds very well. The task of Satan is also that as soon as the aspect of the collective good of mankind comes before man, to place his self-interest before him forthwith so that he moves away avoiding the paths of sacrifice and selflessness. Apart from this, through various kinds of chaos and disorder, he creates such an environment as a result of which the unity of collective life disintegrates. 
And the biggest thing of all is that by making the human heart an abode of fear and despair, he destroys his world of dignity and honor, courage and valor. This is why the Jamaat following Haq has always been forbidden from obeying satanic inclinations and proclivities. Other than Satan the Quran has also used the word Taghat for this purpose. The meaning of which is every one of those non-Allah systems which by enticing human beings away from the authority of Allah teaches obedience and subservience to men. Aside from government and state, this system remains in operation in the world of religion as well through a strange attraction and allurement. But obedience of any other than Allah whether it is in the form of government and nation, or in the garb of religion and veneration, is in any case a blatant shirk against Allah. Furthermore, bear this in mind also that the causes for satanic errors do not come from somewhere outside. Rather it is human deeds themselves which are responsible for them, and the influences of that society which man adopts for himself. These are what are called, Kareen, companions, dot. The Quran has also used the word Satan for the ringleaders of the system of Taghut as well as for the rebellious and fiery violent uncivilized tribes and also in the world of religion for those who tamper with and make additions to the divine revelation, or by fabricating highly enthralling and seductive narrations, turn people away from following the book of Allah towards other paths.